everyone welcome back to the channel i'm kiki this is daphne and today daphne can i please have this conversation all by myself like i grew you i brought you back from the dead and this is how you repay me yeah i'm gonna move you say bye to everyone <laughs> Today we will be talking about do's and don'ts at university. This is advice for freshers and also people who are not freshers because we all still gotta live and, you know, do stuff at university. Do try and go to at least one freshers event if you can in freshers week. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't know what university is gonna be like in the next semester that's coming up because as everyone knows, it is the quarantine lifestyle, socially distant era of our lives. But I would say even if you're not a party person, I would still go to at least one event just to say you've had that experience. If you like going out, then go out by all means. You'll have a great time. Don't feel like you have to go to every single event. I remember there was like a freshers golden ticket or something like that that you bought at the beginning of freshers and it gave you basically a free pass to go to every single event. I mean there were like six or seven maybe eight events in total when I was a fresher. I bought the golden ticket because I was like oh my word I'm gonna be missing out on things if I don't go but I'm here to tell you, I only went to like six of those events out of the eight. Yeah, I probably got my money's worth, but it's still not worth paying like 50 quid, I would say. For me, at least, the most fun nights of Freshers were the first two nights, the f opening thing, and we had like Clan Warfare the second night, which was quite fun as well. It was very hectic, but you know what? I was sober in that second night, and it was an interesting time if I do say so myself do be aware that you need to find people to live with early on I know a couple of my friends who they when they came into second year they were rooming with people who they were best friends with and by the end of this academic year they're no longer friends with they do not speak to said person as a result of having completely different lifestyles from one another I feel like there's a lot of pressure at the beginning of the year to quickly first find friends and to group together as to who's gonna apply for flats together. A note I would say you should go and check out their room. Make sure you know what their sleeping habits are like, what their like hygiene habits are like, all that kind of stuff. See if they're a trustworthy human being, as in will they pay you back on time? Will they, you know, not touch your items when they come into your room? Stuff like that, just so you're sure of who you're living with, as opposed to getting into it and then not being able to get out, which is by far the worst. I've heard some horror stories. Don't get into a relationship in Freshers Week. Now, a lot of you are gonna come at me for saying this. They're gonna be like, Kiki, like, what are you saying? Like, that's what you did. Yes, and that is why I'm telling you not to do it, okay? Y'all don't know each other. Your first year is a time to live, let loose, and find yourself. First, you must broaden your minds. First, you must look beyond. I'm not saying this happens for every relationship. Um, disclaimer, you know, insurance, please. Your first year is meant to be a fun time. You don't know a lot of people. The point is to get to know people. A lot of times things don't go the way you want them to. You end up realizing that you've spent months on a person when you could have been getting to know a lot of other people. And this is not just what happened to me. I have several friends. I have heard several different stories, several breakups that took people a long time to get over. So I would say wait, get to know them. Don't immediately jump into a relationship in your first semester or even in first year. Just my advice. That's all folks. Do join clubs and societies and talk to people you know intellectuals and not even that either like some societies are not intellectual there are like food societies you know what going to some of their events is some of the best some of them are 
some of them are so incredibly fun. I know that the societies that I've been in have been tremendously fun and I've enjoyed partaking in all their activities a lot. And I would say it's also a good thing to help you get to know people in other years, not just third years and fourth years, but also postgrads. It's just a good way to interact with the other years. Of course, one of the ways that you do get to do that is through academic families. Oh my God, there is a hair. I swear there is a hair. Oh, there it is. Why do I keep having Sky's bloody cat hair like literally in my lungs? Hello darkness, my old friend. Academic families, yes. You can meet lots of people through that in different years, but I would say like one of the things that really helped me get to know other people in different years was my societies that I was involved with. Join societies, join clubs, have fun. However, don't pile too much onto your plate. You want to be thriving, not just surviving. I know some people who went out four or five times a week on nights out and on top of that they did sports societies so they had a lot of commitments going on and then when you combine that with the whole needing to socialize and wanting to meet people shenanigans you physically won't be able to cope for very long you will physically suffer you will mentally suffer and your academics will suffer so it's like one big suffer fest sign me up which if you like chill out a bit and realize that you're there for university, then it all starts like leveling up and you can do your socializing, your, you can go to lectures because there are so many people who didn't go to lectures. Cheers, the motherfucking tea. And you know, have a good time because it's, uni you're meant to have a good time and learn stuff you can do both at the same time do continue to get to know people as you move on to different years as you get older in the university hierarchy new people will be coming in every single year and there will still be so many people that you will not know as you get older i've been introduced to some of my greatest friends all in second year just because i hadn't had the opportunity to meet them yet in first year i think there's quite a big shift when you go from being a fresher to being a second year you will lose certain friends that you had during freshers and then you will gain a lot of friends people you've never met before that run in different social circles and also the younger people so like this is not like me saying oh I have friends in all different years I know what I'm popular I have a friend in the year below she's awesome Love you, Andrea. So yeah, you can make friends who are older than you, younger than you, the whole thing. Just continue to make friends, continue to meet people, cause it's a good time. Don't miss out on certain events. Now hear me out. I'm not saying you have to go to every single ball because that is expensive. We all know I spend a lot of money and you know, some of them were not worth it. So my advice would be to pick something that your friends are going to and make a plan to all go together because whenever you go with a large group of people you always end up having a really good time and don't pull a me and leave everything until last minute and do half of an essay before getting dressed up and arriving to the ball lake so I was late to my own opening ball I didn't have the best time at opening ball so lesson learned there some events are really fun some events were not fun if you want a story time for events and how they've been please let me know in the comments below because we all know how much I love my story times, so yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Oh, go on then. I will say as well, a lot of the bigger events take place in second semester, at least here they do. I don't know about other universities. For me, first semester is quite depressy from November onwards, so November, December is quite like really depressy for me, and it's been like that for both years. Hopefully, this year changes. I would say planning things with friends, at least going to one event, may make it a bit better. It gives you something to do and it keeps you excited for something so for example St Andrew's Day was so much fun like partaking in all the events and everything that's at the end of November I believe so that kind of fun with friends is really needed I would definitely recommend St Andrew's Day like the Cayley in South Street to go to although again we may not know what happens this year hello darkness my old friend do take advantage of tutors office hours no! I 
get the stigma, okay? I get that people are gonna say, Oh, Kiki, why should I go to my teacher's office hours? They probably only want to see the older students anyways. You know, first and second year, they don't matter. They don't count towards my degree. Well, you know what? They will teach you things and introduce you to concepts that you never thought you would come across. I had an excellent tutor this last semester and he introduced me to so many different aspects of literary critical thought and stuff that's also philosophical and in history zones. So everything is kind of intertwined with one another. If you need help, go and ask for it. They want to see you. Their office hours are there for a reason. They are getting paid for that time regardless of if you go or not. You may as well go. It's what your education is paying for. And for someone like me who pays over 21k a year, we're gonna take advantage of those office hours. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I just mentioned academically, don't be afraid to ask for help, but also emotionally, don't be afraid to ask for help. There are great student services here. It's so easy to book an appointment online. I will leave links below if anyone wants to check it out, but the student services have really helped me out with counseling and therapy. It's a great time. Student services is there for you to help you out with anything you might be facing and they're really supportive. Don't be afraid to ask. Do get to the library early if you want a good seat. Again, we don't know if the library is even gonna be open this semester, but as a general note, if you get there early, you are more likely to get a good seat. No one likes being shoved in that like random corner or in the middle of like seven people who are all studying. I think that comes with how close you live to the library as well, because some people don't want to be waking up at eight in the morning and going to the library on a, like a long, like 20 minute walk to the library. Other people, they live three minutes away from the library and for them it's not really that big of a deal. If you forget a certain highlighter in your room, you can just go for a little walk back there and get it. <coughs> Ganicky. The rest of us can't do that, so yeah, as a general note, get to the library early. Don't leave printing an essay to the last minute or printing anything for a deadline until the last minute because I will tell you, I have done it. I am guilty of this act. However, ladies and gentlemen, it ain't worth the stress, okay? The stress is another level when your heart is beating like 500 miles per second. Excuse me? It's a killer, okay? It's a killer. And then running, you know, to the history department or English department, it is stressful times. <laughs> Don't do it, it ain't worth it. Do try and get adequate sleep because the number of times I have fallen asleep in a 10 a.m. lecture is high key a mood, I'm not gonna lie, but also you have to know when to do it, right? So I've fallen asleep multiple times when I've been in the first row, but the lecturer has been so like nice or maybe like she's secretly judging me, but on the outside, it looked like she didn't give a shit. So that was fine. I was very unapologetic about my sleeping, at least thankfully, you know, I hope I wasn't snoring at any point because that would have been embarrassing. You don't say. You don't say. But I would say, try and get some good sleep. Don't sleep too late because you don't want to be sleeping in lectures and then you get that like whole fiasco that happened. We talked about it in one of our videos where a lecturer like broke the fourth wall and strolled up to us and Tom had to jab me awake. Again though, I don't know if this tip will be helpful whatsoever because I'm pretty sure all lectures are gonna be online next semester. I really, this whole like online lifestyle, I'm gonna be super honest with you guys. I don't know how it's gonna affect things. It's a bit of a confusing time for all of us. We're just gonna have to see how everything goes. My last don't is don't be too trusting, which is something I'm so guilty of. I trust people so easily. I'm very open in the sense of like, if someone has a chat with me about their life, I will open up to them, all this stuff. Not like the like internal deep stuff, but I will pretty much talk about any issues I'm facing in the moment with someone I've just met, which is, you know, with some people it works, but you have to have like what Sydney calls the hood sense. Sydney, my friend, you gotta have like 
like hood senses in the sense of like you can sense danger you can also sense like when people are not trustworthy and if you should not reveal too much to said person keep that sixth sense on the surface and be prepared and this is like a tip to everyone not just freshers i would say because it happens where you meet someone and you trust them and then they betray that trust and it's just it happens it happens to everyone but i think it's probably one of those things that's more likely to happen when you're a fresher just because everyone's meeting new people and you don't know anyone at least for me um i didn't know a single person person when I came to this university. You kind of have to be wary of the people that you interact with. Not that you shouldn't trust anyone because trusting is a great thing and talking to people is a huge bonding experience and I am a massive believer of like talking to people and hearing their life stories will impact your life in a great way but definitely be wary and be careful not to overshare I would say. Trust if you think you can trust and be wary if you think you need to be wearing use that hood sense as Sydney would say that is it for today's video please let Daphne and I know in the comments below what you would like to see from us I got a very good suggestion about either doing a live stream or a Q&A and if any of you would be interested in a Q&A please leave some questions in the comments below it could be questions about me it could be questions about university it really doesn't matter what we'll just have like a chat about life I guess and I'll answer your questions thank you so much for watching this video give this video a like and subscribe if you have not already we are so close to a thousand subscribers and this big family is just only getting bigger love you guys so much and I'll see you next week bye I really took like the shininess to another level today Words are not coming today. I need to do my vocal warm-ups. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue.